There was a um, studio executive named Herman Rush, who was president of Columbia Pictures Television, who used to sell us a lot of stuff. And I had developed a relationship with Herman from him coming in and selling us stuff. Uh, and he, at the end of this three years, said to me, what are you going to do? Are you going to stay? Are you going to leave? What are you thinking about? And I said, you know, I really don't know. I'm kind of thinking about all of it. Marcy had left. Tom Werner was leaving. Uh, Tony Thomopoulos wasn't president anymore of ABC. You know, things were sort of changing. And I was trying to decide what to do. And Herman said, well, if you're interested, I would make you a producing deal at Columbia if you want to start your own company. Um, I would make you a producing deal. And he offered me what amounted to about three times as much money as I was making at ABC, which sounded pretty good to me. Uh, so I went to Columbia with a producing deal and started my own company. And what was the name of the company? The company is called Can't Sing, Can't Dance Productions. How did you come up with that name? Well, as I said earlier, my family was in vaudeville, and my, uh, you know, my grandparents and my mom, and everybody in my family was a musician uh, or a singer or a dancer, and my dad was a songwriter, and I was the only one who couldn't carry a tune and was totally klutzy. And when I was a little girl, my grandfather used to say to my mother, what is going to happen to her? She can't sing. She can't dance. How is she going to make a living? And they would be just like, I don't know. What are we going to do with her, you know? And so I, I had to do that. It was, it was, you know, just um, destined to be the name of my company. <laughs> The first thing I did was the summer I left ABC, I made a series for ABC called uh, Reggie with Richard Mulligan and um, Gene Smart, who I just love, and uh, who else was in that show? Uh, Chip Zion. Oh, Tim Busfield was in that show. A lot of people who went on and did lots of other series and, and things. And uh, it was a six-episode summer show, and that was basically all that there were. It, didn't, it, it wasn't a hit, and it didn't go on, but it was a lot of fun making, making those episodes. And um, I made some pilots. I made a, a, an adaptation of a British show called The Bounder, and I made a show that was an adaptation of the movie Used Cars. And um, I made another show, I think. While I was there, and a TV movie, I think, and whatever. It was just, you know, the usual stuff. Nothing that became, you know, a hit or anything. And um, at the end of my two year deal, Herman Rush was being promoted to a sort of corporate job. You know, Coca Cola owned Columbia in those days, and it was sort of there was a lot of corporate structure and Herman was being promoted to a corporate job and he asked me if I would like his job as president of the company and I was sort of stunned you know uh, there were no women presidents of television divisions of studios and you know I, I thought that was pretty remarkable that he would ask me uh, and I thought about it for a week or so. I was a little bit concerned about then going back to being an executive again. You know, here I had been a writer and a producer. I became an executive. I went back to writing and producing. Now going back to being an executive, I wasn't sure whether that was smart or, you know. But I, I met with several studio executives and, and uh, people that I trusted and everyone seemed to think that it was something that I should do, that it was a kind of a breakthrough job. It was a, you know, a, a breakthrough position for, for women and that, that I shouldn't turn it down. And so I said yes and, and did it. And uh, I have certainly never been sorry that I, that I did that. It was, it was really great. I had a wonderful experience there. And although working for Coca-Cola was difficult because we were you know, just one division of a huge multinational conglomerate, you know, and ultimately they, I don't think, were very happy that they got into the movie 
and television business, and they wound up selling us uh, a few years later. Um, it was still very interesting for me. It was very interesting to be one of 17 division heads that got to go to all these retreats and management meetings and go to Atlanta to the home office and be, you know, it was a, a real exposure to corporate America because, of course, ABC in those days was, was Leonard Goldenson. It wasn't. It had yet to be bought by Cap Cities. It had yet to be taken over by Disney. It had yet. You know, it was a little. It was almost like a mom and pop sort of organization. You know, and here I was at Coca Cola. It was very uh, exciting and interesting. You know, what do you think they hoped you would bring to the company? Well, I, you know, I mean, obviously, I think they thought they were hopeful that we would have some successful shows. They were hopeful that the division would grow. I think they were pleased with themselves that they had, as the chairman of the board of the company told me, the first woman division head in Coca-Cola in 100 years, which I thought was freaky and amazing. Um, you know, they were very proud of themselves, but I thought it was horrifying. You know, I mean, it was just two different ways of looking at this. Um, and I, I, you know, I think that they were, uh, it was good for them. You know, I, th I think they felt good about it. What did your responsibilities entail there? Well, basically everything that was in the television division reported to me except sales. So uh, international and um syndication sales did not report to me. But everything else, uh, network production, uh, first run production, business affairs, casting, current programming, uh, post production, uh, you know, I mean basically anything that had to do with making television shows reported to me. And I had a fantastic group. Um, you would be amused to know that here it is. That was 1984 that I became president of the company. This is 2004. And yesterday I had lunch with the guy who was my uh, second in command. And tomorrow I'm having lunch with a guy who was in my management training program, who is now head of, uh, head of original programming at Showtime. And we're all still very, very good friends. There's a whole group of us, about 10 people, that you know see each other and are. We had a great group of people, and uh, and I'm very pleased about that. I think it says a lot about everyone who was there at that time, that we're still all good friends. And a lot of people have gone on to have really wonderful careers in other places. Well, of course, you know, we were suppliers to networks and we were suppliers to first run syndication. So we were doing everything. We were doing comedy, drama, um, you know, we were doing first run, uh, first run syndicated shows, which meant we were actually producing shows for syndication, which was pretty unusual in those days. I mean, now, of course, you've had all these, you know, Xenas and, uh, you know, all these dramatic shows that have been. Uh, in first run, but it was unusual then. We had shows that were, uh, we, we had a few shows that had been new network shows that didn't have a sufficient number of episodes to go into syndication like Punky Brewster and Gidget and um, What's Happening and uh, where we decided uh, corporately that we would make more episodes in order, after it was no longer on the network, that we would pay to make more episodes to give us a package that was saleable in syndication. So we made like 44 more episodes of, uh, of uh, Punky Brewster, and I think we made 44 more episodes of Gidget, and we made, um, you know, there was a whole, a whole business that most people were not in at that time. We made movies and miniseries because studios were still doing that then, which most of the studios do not do anymore. There's not that much money in them, and they've sort of passed that on to independent producers. But in those days, studios were making TV movies and miniseries. We had a whole department of TV movies and miniseries development people. Um, so besides the usual series. We were doing, you know, a lot of other business.